so Chris, we're here talking about the self-employed model, um, and obviously off the, the back of the fact that I have I'm launching EXP in the UK. Yep. I know you've been a big advocate of self-employed. You've certainly got opinions on it. How would you go about setting up a self-employed model if you were an estate agent? Okay, well, I've, been on, I've gone on record, Adam, to say that I believe in the next 10 years, 30% of estate agents will be on the self-employed model. Um, I think the online model is, is a, a model which is going to, is not dead and buried, but it's kind of got to 5 6 7%, and it's, I think it'll stay there. Um, there's an awful lot of managing directors out there who are looking at their staffing costs, looking at their rent, and thinking to themselves, is this a potential solution to save an awful lot of money? And I think if there are people out there, bosses who think that um, the self-employed hub model is a way to save money, I think that's the wrong attitude to go down. Why is that? You see, I'm of the opinion that the balance between the brand and the person in UK state agency is wrong. Why should the boss keep 95% of the fee and 5% of it go to the valuer or, or even 90% and 10% go to the valuer when it's the valuer or the lister or the negotiator that gets the house on the market, does the negotiating, gets the deal. I think we have, we, we have, there are certain elements, not all, certain elements of the industry who have brainwashed the valuers into believing that the brand is more important than the person and I believe we're in a people business not a property business and therefore if we go down the self-employed route valuers and negotiators especially valuers and managers will actually earn what they deserve for, for the effort that they put in that is why and how, how's that going to benefit the consumer and I've got an idea of how that benefits the consumer what, what are your thoughts on that well I had Nick Neal on this sofa here um, about a year ago and his his model is the you move model is an absolutely fantastic model and it was that model that actually got me really interested in the self-employed model and and basically the 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 valuer or the in essence the license holder the franchisee does everything i think you know well, there are valuers out there who go around in their fancy bmws sit on the sofa give it the, the one hour bullshit or, to the granny on the sofa and you never hear from that valuer again whilst and then you, the negotiating is done by Floss, the 21-year-old millennial, nothing against millennials, who, who you know, couldn't negotiate for toffee, let alone get someone up from 450 to 475. But the reason they're doing that is because they're only earning 5%. So why should, you know, with that, with that self-employed model where you're going to earn the vast majority of the money, then most agents will take ownership of that, and that then cascades into a better consumer experience. Is what definitely. I mean, is. if you think about it, if a value is good enough to go and sit on the proverbial sofa and convert someone at two percent, and all the other agents are doing it at one, they should be the one that does the 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 the, the, the negotiating. And what I'm suggesting, the you move model, is that the person who does the viewing is the valuer, the person who does the offer is the valuer, and the person who negotiates everything from start to finish, one person. And I, the, you could almost turn around and say, well, surely that means that there's, you can only take on so many properties. Well, surely if you can take on 10 properties a month and sell eight of them and sell it for 2% fee, as opposed to busting the gut and getting 20 a month at 1%, yeah. you can always employ a few people in the background just to help you out. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I met a guy, I met an agent recently who's, who's out already charging, he's, he's got his own business, um, and he's charging £500 up front and 2% on completion, but he promises to only deal with five clients a month. Um, and, and he's actually getting clients phoning up saying, can I get on your list of, of clients? Well, it's almost like a waiting list. Yeah, he's got a waiting list. And in this is 300,000 average house price, 2% average fee. And he said, do you know what, Adam, I sell every single property. There you go. You know, that, that's the self-employed okay. model, isn't it? Where people actually, the consumer wants to use you. Um, they get a great service, a great experience, um, and they're happy to pay that sort of fee. Let's bring it back though to, to we, the original question you asked me was about bosses and, and whether they should do it or not. And if they're doing it for self, to save money, no, they shouldn't. Um, th there are plenty of people out there, I can count them on probably definitely one hand and a couple who are doing this really well. And let me just rattle some names off. Um, 
Got to mention Sean Newman. Yeah. Um, Perry Power. Kel the Keller Williams model. You're just starting off, so you'll be fine, EXP. Um, also, um, Steve Wayne from Benjamin Stevens. They've all got slightly different models, but some, and, and there's others that I won't mention, there are certain elements to some of them that where they're doing better than others. And can I share with you what my top tips would be to anyone who's thinking of setting up a self-employed model? Go so it's Because, it. I mean, if you think about it, I'm almost helping you here, mate, aren't I? <laughs> Okay, so let's look at it from the point of view of the person setting the business up, the boss. I think in the UK there is a, there is a element of I'm the boss, you, I tell you what to do. And if you're going down the self-employed route, you as the boss have to completely change your attitude internally to your team. And instead of almost, you know, like you have staff diagrams where the boss is at the top and then everyone's underneath, you've got to turn it up, up 180 and you're at the bottom helping your team, your people, your tribe. And you work for them. Yeah. So you've got to become a leader, not a manager. And unfortunately, there's plenty of managers out there, but there's not many leaders. But another huge tip, so that's a huge mindset change that you have to go down. The other big change that I believe has to happen is, I know you're attracting an awful lot of agents, self-employed agents to EXP, but even then, I still believe there is a certain element of a, an employed mindset up here, which will slowly dissipate as the years go by. But if you've been working for William H. Brown or Connells for 20 years, you can't turn on that, that um, self-employed entrepreneurial straight away. The, you'll have certain fixed mindsets, won't you? Yeah, but how, how, how would you change that? If you're an agent going out and you know, joining one of these EXP or whoever, how do you how, how would you switch your mindset well i mean the hardest bit is to make the decision the fear of of you know look um getting getting the, the other half on board uh, the fear of looking a prat if you don't do well because you know you, you worry about what your mum or dad will think about you or what the neighbors because again i think we in britain worry worry too much about what other people think about us mm -hmm. and we're fearful of looking stupid and fearful of looking a prat if we do fail i mean what's the worst could happen if, if you fail, you can turn around to your missus and say, well, you were right. And if I, if I succeed, well, I can shove up your backside because I, I did it. Yeah. But you're not going to die, are you? No, no, no. And, and talking of dying, that's, that's always been my mindset is it, when I'm on my deathbed, when I'm 75, hopefully 85, but, you know, what am I going to look back on? Am I going to look back on and think, yeah. think, oh, I'm glad I didn't take that risk? Absolutely not. I'm going to look back and think, oh, I'm so glad I took that risk and took a punt on it. You, you go and talk to any old people and they always talk about regrets, but they never regret what they didn't do. Yeah, exactly. So that's the first mindset shift, isn't it? Yeah. But then in terms of that mindset shift in terms of a work... Sorry, they, regret what they, they never regret what they did do. They always regret what they didn't do. Yes. Yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but, so that, that's the... I agree with you. That's the first part of change and that mindset change okay. is... is is probably for me looking into the future and thinking. Okay. Well, it's your job as the as the centre manager or the, the leader to create a, a vibe or a tribe that that basically, even though that person is still self employed, is legally self employed, you they are going to be going through a transition or a journey over a period of. I mean, and it's good you've been there and I've been there. I mean, I've been self-employed now for five and a half years and I still have wobbles. Someone to almost coach them, guide them, support them mm -hmm. internally to keep them on their journey. Because people almost, not like a parent, but almost like a guide. Yeah. You know, yeah, someone just to look out for you. Probably someone who's been there, done it before. Yeah. What, and in terms of getting up, get up, getting up and running quickly and, you know, you're a very long-term thinker, I think, in terms okay. of the videos and the farming and stuff like that you do. But what's the strategy of an agent, do you, in your opinion, going self-employed? Should they look short-term, long-term, or a bit, a bit of both? And how do they... Before I answer that question, can I, can I leave just... Not leave, but can I just mention another skill which is re definitely required from anyone setting up a self-employed model? Go on. Okay. So we've talked about you being a leader internally but you also need to be a leader externally for, for, uh, for agents to be attracted to you. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that 
yourself and Sean Newman in particularly is getting out there creating great content, valuable content that, that other agents are interested in that will basically he becomes an attraction that people start to trust him. Yeah. And that's, you know, you, you're doing it. You need to do a lot more of it though, mate, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> Just create compelling, interesting, intriguing comments, um, uh, content that people would miss if you didn't. And it's a case of telling people stories, your stories, everyone else's stories, your fears, the frustrations, documenting people's journeys. Definitely, if I was you, you know when you launch, I want you to take your mobile phone and I want you to video people talking about their journey of on EXP, yeah. about the fears, the frustrations, the hopes and the dreams. It's just, on the roadmap. Just get it out there, babes, because I tell you now, if you do that, people will watch it and they'll start to trust you because you're engaged, they're engaging with your content and, and people become trustworthy of people who they with content they engage with, hence yeah. why we put celebrities on. On the on the pedestal, right? Answer your question: short term or long term? You need to do both, mate. How do you do both? How do you get that short term win with a few instructions and a couple of sales under your belt, but also have that establish yourself long term in that area? Okay, so we both have twenty four hours in the day, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, it shocks me how much time people waste watching Netflix. Um, I think the average human being is on social media nearly two hours a day. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, the people that are watching this are going to be going to be. You know, you've got to get up at six in the morning and do two hours worth of. You know, I think the morning you've got to be you've got to be doing at least two hours prospecting. But but you know, we how many people finish work at six, have their tea by seven? Yes, you've got the kids. You put the kids to uh, to bed between eight, you know half seven and eight o'clock and nine o'clock. You've still got between nine o'clock and twelve o'clock. Yeah. All right. You've got the same hours as I have, but if it's that important, you've got to you've got to work eighteen hours a day. And that you can say, well, that's easy to do if you've got a family. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not being with my family. Well, none of us remember our times. You know, if you're with your kids, but you're just on your phone all the time playing Candy Crush, that's not quality time, mate. Yeah. It, we as children remember. The, you know, when we took when our dad or mum took us to the park, you don't have to be there all the time, but the, the amount of time that you do there has to be 100% quality. Yeah. Uh, I know it sounds really daft, but switch your notification, switch your bloody mobile phone off. Do not disturb two hours, nine till 11. Yeah, two, right. Yeah. But even with your kids. Yeah. And, you know, if you've got to work your ass off on a Saturday, but Sunday's off time, do it. But make sure you do have some quality time and take them down the park and, and make memories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's hard work, but I mean, if it wasn't hard work, everyone would be doing it. Well, and that's, you know, no one says it's going to be easy. And those those people that reach the top are generally, you know, that earn the big bucks. Well, well look at all the sports stars. Look at all the, all, um, you know, the, 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 the musicians. People say that they're overnight success. You never saw them putting in the, 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 the years of busking and things like that. Yeah. I'm sorry, we, we, especially the younger generation, and I'm making a sweeping statement here. Because not everyone fits into this, into this. So I'm not being against millennials or anything like that. But but there is almost a sense of entitlement of if I open up an agency, people will come to me. No, they bloody well won't. It's sodded hard work. So I'll, t I'll tell you a little. St when we started Hatch, there was me and two business partners actually, and we 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 start we started building the website in August or whatever it was with a launch in May. I mean, it was a long old slog. Oh, it was just horrendous. Until we went live. Anyway, we went live on the 25th of May, 2006. And uh, and we sat in our office. And we literally just sat there, waiting for the phone to ring. And after, after three days of sitting there, me and the two Jameses that I worked with, we said, well, the phone isn't ringing, but we've got a website. Yeah. We've, we've put a few leaflets out. We've got a... Uh, We've got a Google AdWords campaign. Google's really early at that time. Why isn't the phone ringing? And we all had a little bit of a huddle and thought, you know, if it carries on like this, we'll, we'll be out of money within six weeks. And so we went and traipsed the roads. We did the good old fashioned, you know, went down the roads, went down the, the busy roads with the, you know, where, where the signs could be seen the most, knocked on doors, put leaflets through letterboxes, spoke to anyone would see, went down the pub on the Friday night, gave our business cards out, mm. started prospecting, canvassing. And it was only from, you know, after a week of nothingness where we just expected mm. stuff to happen to us. It's a lot of it was only when that. we actually got out there and did it, did the hard yards. 
um, that business started coming. So. I, I'm of the opinion that, okay, so there's two types of, of, of business generation, hunting and farming, okay? Hunting, you go out and go and get it, like the proverbial caveman. And the farming is you basically create the farm and the animals come in into the field and then whenever you want something, it's there. Yeah. I think for the first year, two years, you have to do both. You have to go hunting and farming. Now there's plenty of agents that just do hunting. The problem with hunting is as soon as you stop it, it stops like a tap. Yeah. So for the first year or so, you go go hunting and almost do the farming, the pr pr creating the field, making it gorgeous and lovely, tilling the soil. So when the wildebeest walk past, they, they come into your field and you can close it if we're using analogies. Yeah. And then eventually you can slowly drop the hunting and you can just be a farmer. And we all know that farmers are a lot richer than hunters. So what does that what does that exactly look like? Well, I mean, we've I've interviewed the great and good of the UK estate agency, but fundamentally, the best if you what you actually what what I would do if I was an EXP or a self employed agent or any agent tomorrow, to get business estate agency business. Go on. I'd use the frozen P method. Love the frozen P method. I've done a training video on it which if you just type into Google, um, so into YouTube, the frozen P method, it comes up. But fundamentally, you knock on the door of every single property that's on the market in your town. When they open, which immediately, people, most, most people watching this are not gonna do this because they're afraid of rejection, especially valuers, they hate, you know, they want everyone to love them, don't they? And basically you knock on the door and you say, hi, my name's Chris from Chris Estate Agents. I'm, I've been driving past your property now for eight weeks. Um, I can't stop because I've got a viewing in, around the corner in, in four minutes time, but I'm just, I'm knocking your door because I'm really worried. What, why are you worried? Well, I see you're on the market with Connells. Other estate agents are available. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, and they are an absolutely fantastic estate agent, by the way. Which they are. Yes, they are. They are a very good estate agent. But I don't yet. I don't know if you're aware that that uh, ten or twenty percent of properties that come on the market don't actually make the portals, and that means that you're probably missing out. Now, I don't want your name or number, but if you give me, uh, if you tell me what you're looking for, if I, if I spot anything, I'll pop it in the post to you. Brilliant. So if I, I'm not asked for your name, your details no. or anything, I'm not asked to try and sell you anything. So basically it's saying you're not on the mailing list. You then bugger off and then next week you knock on their door and you say, hi, it's Chris again. I'm the chap that knocked on your door last week. Can't stop, got frozen stuff in the car. That's why it's called the frozen pee method. Um, I spotted this three bedroom semi that's on the market with purple bricks and I spotted this three bedroom semi that's on the market with heart. So you've got to, you've got to give other agents details. Okay, that's, good. that's interesting. So that's, why, a bit, that's a bit, I'm not sure I want to do that. Okay, the purpose of, the purpose of, is to get the business, isn't it? Yeah. So you have to build up trust. No like and trust. Yes. So if you went in there slagging the opposition off or basically saying your will is big, bigger than anyone else's, are you building trust? No. What if you, now that property is already on the market, you have no properties to sell, they can see it on right move, but who's the person that's that printed off and delivering it? And even if they say, oh, I've seen that one, you're still, you're you're still, still the person dropping establishing it trust. Okay. What you then do is you then walk away. Okay. Just disappear. Yes. Next week, you go online and print off the same, uh, the next ones that fit their requirements. And how often do you have to do this? Once a week. Uh, and uh, when, but when can you start asking for the business? You never ask for the business, Adam. Really? What you do is... Well, we're a salesman. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, but but again, these are, these are new school techniques. Uh, okay. If you want your old school techniques, go knocking on the door, so I get a competition off and waste your time. All right? Or use this method. This method took me from in a city centre agency for, from from low te late teens, sorry, in terms of new instructions within two months, I was in the top four. Wow. What you do is this. You start knocking on the door four or five weeks before the end of the sole agency. And you have to hit them every single week. And then at week five or six, and again, we go into a lot more detail on the training video. So you just type in the frozen pee method. You know, the excuses, I'm around the corner on the viewing. I've got to get them on the way home. Can't stop. You never, you never, you just give the brochures. You're going to say, well, hold on. How, you said post the brochure. 
you can say this came on this morning i was about to post it but then i thought i remembered i got a viewing around the corner so i thought i'd save myself a postage stamp yeah it's really important because that because then they say well, why has he dropped it off to save money yeah you're not really doing that. You're doing it to, to build a relationship. You just keep giving them brochures. And what they'll do at week six or seven, five, six or seven, they'll say the magic line. Which is what? Chris, I feel really embarrassed that you're trying to find me a property. But I haven't found, I haven't sold mine. Wow, okay. And what do you think the reply is? Well, I mean, that's just an easy in. Oh, let me come in and take a look, see if there's anything I can help with. See if, I, if they've got great agent commas, but let's just see if I've missed, they've missed anything. Yeah. And they, they just happen to be opening that. And as soon as you hit them four or five weeks before the end of their sole agency, they'll be getting jitters at the time of their sole agency ending. Perfect it's the only time. thing I know that works, yeah. that works really well. The next best thing, if you've got a cop out, is a letter. Yeah. So that's how I built my businesses. Okay. So that's how I built Hatched was letter, but we had really good content. Yes. This was back in 2006. Um, and timing was perfect. We did bombard them as well, to be honest. I, I tell you what, I, I've, got a, I've got a friend who works for one of the, um, how can I say, vulture estate agents. <laughs> I won't mention their name, okay. but they're the ones that basically bombard agents' properties. With the, you know, they never go for the first time, they always go for the second time. They're a nationwide agent. And I asked him, what is the secret to his letters? And what do you think the, the answer was? Mm, consistency. Is it really? Yeah. That's all I think it is, yeah. Consistency. Drip, 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 yeah. drip, drip, drip. So I remember when I had my house on the market three or four years ago, and I got one letter per agent, but none others followed. I mean, it was, on for, it was only on for three weeks. Obviously, I'm an estate agent, so I sold it very quickly. But for, for three weeks, I didn't get, you know, that consistent. And, uh, you know, look, there's time in there, and maybe I'd have been targeted a bit later on in the process, but... Yeah, but, I, th I think it's almost wasting money in the first few weeks you could probably do yeah. an intro letter yeah uh, and if you filled that full of content you know top tips to sell your house uh, top tips to get the best value and just the thing yeah you know I, I mean I, I thought one of my plans for my estate agency would be you know five reasons or five ways to maximize the potential of selling your house yes and one letter per week you know tip number one this Definitely. is why it hasn't sold tip number two is or not why it hasn't, it hasn't sold it's, it's got negative. to be valuable yeah so that's that's hunting but then it comes down to farming. Now, I'm a firm believer. So if I had an agent and I was setting up an agency today, yes, I'd do the hunting method, but I'd also start doing the farming almost straight away. So which town are you from? Hitchin. Where do 100% of Hitchin homeowners live? Uh, Hitchin. Would it be fair to say that Hitchin homeowners are interested in the Hitchin property market? Yes. So I know we're going to come on to, and I'm yeah, going to go challenge on, you a bit in a minute. Yeah, go on then. Well, so I, I see a lot of videos out at the moment, and this is probably thanks to you. I mm -hmm. think you're a master videographer and, Thank and, you. and you know, influencer in the industry. So, um, But the videos I see at the moment from estate agents are, Hi, uh, Adam Day here from Hitchin, and the average terrace is £333,564, and that's gone up by 10% in the last four years. And this. the average detached house is... I'm not interested in that. I'll be honest, I'm not particularly interested in that. But do you think the, 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 the man on the street is interested in the average price of a terraced house across the whole of a town? So has any of the videos that you've been watching been from a Hitchin agent? No. You've answered your own question. Okay. You see, you are connected up as, as, as someone big in the industry to other estate agents. So therefore, the way social media works is you get to see what your connections are checking out. So if all your connections are estate agents, you will see all their content. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you're going to see 20 estate agents all doing the terraced house is this <laughs> and it's gone up by this. If you don't live in that town, no, you are not going to care about that. But surely I'm going to care more about um, content like, you know, can I make an offer when my house hasn't sold? Or... No, no. What you, okay, probably only two or three, okay, no, hold on a second, we can work this out. At any one time, there is no more, if there's, if, hold on, we can work our sums out. There's 27 million houses set um, in the UK, of which, just work my sums out, duh, 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 about 19 of them are privately owned, owner-occupied. And, uh, and in the UK, 1.4 million, 1, 1 million houses sell. So yeah. one in 20 people a year move, right? 
It's about five, six percent go on the market. Six to seven percent okay. go on the market in any one year. Okay, so that will be of interest to them. Where I think estate agents are going wrong with their marketing is that they're trying to get it on the radar of people that have already made a decision on which estate agent to use. Okay. Your job as an estate agent is to get on their radio before they need you. Now, do you think someone who's thinking of selling in two years' time is interested about putting an offer in? No. No, that's a good point. Okay. Now, you, that content's great for existing people that are on the market. You've got to work out what... What get, I call it the dinner party effect. What gets talked about around dinner parties? Now, would the question of, should you put an offer in before you, you sell, be on a dinner party? No. No, it'd be, okay. what, what's, okay. what's the what house price? But what if hitching house prices have gone up more than Letchworth? Yeah. That's, yes? Yeah. Talking about the local property market is just about getting engagement and interest. Now you you know you talked about these local these videos. Yeah, so, so yeah, so you've made me think of something. The most co when I left when I left Hatch again, I keep talking about it, but I will do. Um, when I left Hatch, I put on my Facebook thing. For the last time ever, I will be asked the question: How's the property market? There you go. Because that's the question that I've been asked. If I had a pound for that that up question, then we'd be rich men, wouldn't we? Of course you would. So you're going to say, well. You know those those local, and again, there's plenty of agents out there saying, well, every agent's doing it. Again, if you're an agent and you're, and you're connected with other agents chucking videos out, that's all you're going to see. It's like you decide to buy a Mini and all you see is Minis on the road. They were already there before. It's yeah. just that you were out, got your reticular yeah. vision looking for them. Okay. The job of an estate agent, I mean, if the, the best thing you can do as an agent is put your mobile phone on a tripod, go out onto the town green and do a local property market report. I've done training videos on them how to do a property market report using Rightmove. You don't have to be a member of Rightmove, it's all there. And all you do is you post it in the Facebook groups of your town. Yeah. Because the only people that are gonna buy, I love hitching or hitching, buying and selling cheap shit, excuse my French, <laughs> are people from? Hitching. Good See, stuff. that's where everyone goes yeah. wrong with their social media. They just chuck it out on their own feed, which is, is good. But it's better placed if you paste it in the other in the groups that are based on your town. You see, one of the best things I advise my clients to do is go into these Facebook groups, these hitching. I think I'm giving you all my your training now. Yeah, you can watch this video. You're like, is if you go into a hitching group, that would can we agree that most of the people are from hitching? Yeah, yeah, or have been in hitching, but they're mostly from hitching. Okay, yeah. so you press the word members, connect, 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 connect. Yeah. And that, uh, Facebook only let you do that for probably about 15 minutes. Then tomorrow, connect, 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 connect. Yeah. Your job as an estate agent is to be the most interest. You know, after after the weather, the, the British, the, the the town property market is the most interesting thing in the world to people. Yet all we do as agents is talk about ourselves and our market share. Yeah. So if we create content that's interesting about the property market to local people, would we'll be interesting. That's what landlord and vendor farming is. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Chris.